City centre streets deserted, businesses around them shuttered, while office workers are told not to go to work. But even after they're allowed to return, it looks as if there'll be a permanent reduction in the number of daily commuters. Glasgow is seeing some of the biggest impact of any city in Britain, and Edinburgh's not far behind. Business leaders want the First Minister to be aware of the consequences of encouraging people to continue working from home. Our business and economy editor, Douglas Fraser, reports. Unlocking lockdown cannot come soon enough for around 30,000 Glasgow workers. Their sales rely on passing pavement footfall of commuters, spending on pubs, restaurants, shops, cafes and George Rogers' repair shop on Sochi Hall Street. Normally they bring in three quarters of his trade. This is my livelihood, I've got a family to keep, so you get in and you get it done and you soldier on. But we each passing week and each kind of reduction on that normal trade you would expect, you know, it becomes more pressurised. If Clydeside had tumbleweed, it would be rolling through this financial district. In a study by the Centre for Cities of Activity for the end of May, Glasgow had the lowest share of pre-COVID commuters of any British city. Only 9% were going to work. The cut in footfall, the numbers out and about, down to only 40% of pre-COVID levels. Only London was lower. The Scottish Government's yet to signal whether easing of COVID restrictions this month and next will come with a green light to bring back office workers. Businesses hope it will. I would say to the Scottish Government, think very carefully about the messages that you put out on the 19th and on the, of July and on the 9th of August, um, because I, I get the impression that there will be more of a message to suggest that home working should be encouraged. Now, I can understand that, but there is a wider economic harm that comes from encouraging home working. Not just to have to say to all the associated traders, there are impacts on the companies, the offices themselves, particularly for young people trying to learn, trying to develop. Glasgow's attracted big financial firms to locate here. This office is for 5,000 Barclays staff, one of three global hubs. After COVID, with working from home, they may require a fraction of that space. For other parts of the economy, they can spring back into shape. But for city centres, they face permanent change. That's because workers in a place like this, they've learned how to work from home and they want to continue to do that at least part of the week. Now that forces city centres to reinvent, to redevelop, and it presents opportunities for the suburbs, for the towns where these people live. Such as air, where people grasp the opportunity to work away from the city office. Well, here we are, this is the atrium of the building. For this shared workspace with spaces to meet and even a meditation garden, it's brought new types of client. There's certainly more people looking for flexible office space. Um, primarily people that are working from home. Um, they've been at home now for quite a long time. The novelties, if there, if there was a novelty, is worn off. Um, they're finding it quite challenging to mix home life with work life. Uh, doorbells ringing, dogs barking, Amazon deliveries. I mean, a lot of these people would be travelling from places like here. You're talking two hours, two and a half hours, sometimes three hours uh, commuting time, which they've now clawed back. Uh, and I think some of them don't want to give that up. What we don't yet know is how well firms can operate with both office and home working. Will that permanently harm efficiency, creativity, team spirit, or are home workers happier and more productive? We're about to find out. Douglas Fraser, Reporting Scotland.